when you're deploying Kubernetes clusters, there are a lot of configurations that need to occur. So whether you're doing this on Terraform or whether you're doing this via the UI, there are a mess of things that you need to configure. Now, the first is the cluster name, the Kubernetes version, etc. Next, you need to utilize a specific IAM role to actually deploy that cluster. And once you do that, you then have to add others in. So other engineers, for example, to be able to utilize that Kubernetes cluster. And then you need to configure logging and you need to configure networking. So what subnets are gonna be used? You're gonna be using public subnets, private subnets, what VPC you're gonna be using. There is a plethora of information, including various IAM roles. Now, a lot of the time, especially if you're just getting into Kubernetes, you don't want something as complex as just getting the cluster up and running. Maybe you just wanna get a dev cluster up and running. Maybe you just wanna get a production ready out of the box cluster up and running. That way you don't have to worry about all, the, all these various configurations. Yeah, you're gonna to have to worry about them at some point, but you may not wanna worry about them right off the bat. So with Portainer, we can actually see and utilize how we can get a cluster up and running and configured in a much easier fashion. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so first things first, I just wanna show what this thing is gonna look like from a code perspective. Now, AKS, actually not that bad to get up and running. And by the way, the clusters that I'm showing here, well, not the clusters, but the code to create the clusters, these are just very straightforward. They don't have any you know, added plugins like Cilium, for example, really just raw vanilla clusters, all right? So first things first, you're gonna to have to specify your Terraform block, your provider, and then your actual resource itself, so the cluster. Now, again, AKS is pretty straightforward. However, if you look at something like EKS, for example, there are 131 lines of code here, and the only third party or add-on that I'm adding is the CSI provider for EBS, all right? But this is pretty beefy. We got our Terraform block, we got our provider, we got our resources to create various IAM roles or, or attach various policies rather to the IAM role. And then you can actually do your cluster configuration. And then you have to do the same thing, IAM role, policy attachment, and then you have to create a node group. Now, this is really what you're gonna see more or less in a production scenario. However, again, when you're just getting your cluster up for the first time, you may not wanna go through all this and you may want something that's a little bit more point and click, that way you can actually learn it because as we all know, you can't automate something like this until you fully know it. And you can't fully know something until you do it the manual way. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Now, I'm in AWS and this is just an example here. I'm gonna to go to EKS and then I'm gonna click on clusters and I'm gonna click add a cluster, create. Now, as you can see here, there are various steps. You have to configure the cluster, specify the networking, logging, select add-ons, et cetera. Again, you may not know all of this right off the bat when you are creating your first cluster. And this can be not only cumbersome, but almost standoffish because there are a lot of configurations here. So when you're getting started on your Kubernetes journey, you may want something that's a little bit more straightforward. And that's where we can bring Portainer into play here. So first things first, I can click on add an environment and then I can utilize this CAS or Kubernetes as a service button here where I can provision a Kubernetes environment with a specific cloud provider. I can click start wizard and then I can specify certain environments. So Sivo, Linode, DigitalOcean, GCP, AWS, Azure. The primary ones are here and available for you and the ones that aren't primary. So like Linode and DigitalOcean, you may not see them as much in production as you would, you know, AKS or EKS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click AWS and I'm going to give my cluster a name, AKS, or I'm sorry, EKS, EKS staging. I already have my credentials here set up for AWS. If you don't already have those, essentially it's just going to ask you for a client ID and a secret and you can obtain that information via the security credentials from your IAM role. And then all I have to do is just specify my region, my AMI type, the instance type, node and disk, node count, Kubernetes version, I can specify that here, and then literally just click provision environment, and that's it. So I don't have to look through various amounts of code, I don't have to look through all of these different configurations, I can simply just specify a few options and then what's going to happen is Portainer is going to use EKSCTL on the back end 
and it's going to create a new VPC for you. It's going to create the EKS cluster itself, the worker nodes, all that stuff. And you don't have to do anything else except fill in some information here. So utilizing Portainer to get your Kubernetes cluster up and running for the first time is certainly an easier approach than going through Terraform or going through the AWS console, for example. Again, you're going to see stuff like Terraform and you know various infrastructure as code tools used in production, but when you're first getting a cluster up and running, this is a great way to get started.